Hi, Dean. This is Adil speaking from the Two Saints Show. How are you doing, Dean? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, thanks. How's everything going during the lockdown with the family and that? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. It's, um, we're adapting, but no, it's um, it's been okay. The kids are homeschooled, so yeah. <laughs> my wife's looking after that and... No, just trying to keep busy and active, but um, yeah, we're adapting, put it that way. Oh, well, that's good. Um, I've been seeing the Dean Hammond uh, Fitness Live, which is good to see that you're trying to keep the fans in a good uh, shape during this difficult time. Yes, it's something that um, I've, I've wanted to do for a while, and it's um, something that's obviously with this the situation we're in that um, has pushed me to do it, and I'm really enjoying it. It's um, I love fitness, I've always loved fitness, so... Um, I'd be doing it every day anyway, so anyone that joins in and, and joins with me and um, enjoys fitness as well, then we can get a good workout together. And it's um, it's nice to uh, share and help people. And um, just a little bit of our today, you kind of feel as though you've got a bit, a bit of company, a bit of different company. So yeah, it's been nice. Yeah, it's been good. I mean, I, I've been I've seen Adam Adam Lalana has been doing it on Instagram. Maybe you should go live with him. Could probably teach him a, a thing or two. <laughs> Yeah, that would be nice. It'd be nicer, to be fair. Yeah. You're right, it would be nice to get a few ex-footballers uh, involved. Yeah. Uh, but I think they know what I like. I think uh, I think they, uh, they think I push them too hard because uh, I love my fitness and I was always fit when I played. So I think there's, I think they're giving me a wide berth at the moment because I don't want to work too hard. Yeah, well, you, you played a long long career. Uh, you know, you, I think, did you retire, was it around 35, 37? Uh, I'm 37 now, so mm. I finished when I was about 34. So, yeah, it's mm-hmm. been about... It's been about three years since I, uh, well, since I officially finished playing professionally. So it's been a while. Um, okay. But yeah, I've got, I've got a bit of itchy feet at the minute, I must admit. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good to see. Um, well, I've been speaking to uh, Southampton fans, um, you know, my friends, and they're really excited uh, to hear about, uh, from you because it's been a while. Believe it or not, eight years ago, uh, yesterday, we got promoted back to the Premier League. Um, does it feel like wow. eight years? It definitely doesn't for me. No, it doesn't. No, obviously the memories that I have and what I can remember, but it feels like it feels like yesterday. And just you know, great memories, great experience. Um, love my time there and moments like that that happen in your career. And obviously with back to back promotions from League One to the Premier League was was a massive achievement and a fantastic achievement for the club. But um, no, it doesn't feel like eight years ago. It feels like the, you know, it was just like yesterday and. Uh, yeah, you wish you could go back in time, but if I could go back to that moment and, and really relish that even more, that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah, it was a great day for the club. Great spectacle. It's good to have seen that the club are still in the Premier League and we've pushed on. We've had some great success uh, achieving, you know, record points and things like that. And it wouldn't be uh, possible without yourself and the rest of the squad, Nigel Adkins, and and having belief that Southampton could come back to the Premier League. No, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. No, it was um, like individual. Personally, it was um, a, a privilege and uh, a joy to play for Southampton and uh, you know a huge football club. Um, it was brilliant playing for for the club with with really good players, um, t- very talented players, good people, uh, very family club. So um, it's big in the community as well. So no, it was a, it was a brilliant part of my life. I, I really, really love playing it, and it's it's great to see the club doing so well now. Um, an established Premier League club where it should be because it is a huge football club with um, amazing support, um, big support. So, you know, hopefully the club can keep pushing on, um, can keep making progress um, um, and let's see where they can go in the future. Yeah, it was uh, it was really good to see you come back for the testimonial for four years ago, Kelvin Davis won. That was uh, it was all, it was good to see all the players and you know get, show them our appreciation for what they've done for the club. But uh, let's go back to when you um, were at Colchester United and the phone call came and the interest came from Southampton. What were your thoughts and feelings at the time? Um, well, initially, um, I was I was surprised. Um, the phone call came from uh, Dean Wilkins, who was assistant manager at the time, who I'd worked with previously at Brighton, um, and just gave me just wanted to speak to me to to sound me out whether I would be interested. Um, we'd just beaten um, of the culture, so we'd just beaten Norwich seven yeah. one. Um, so we were we were top of the league, and um, Southampton were obviously on the point deduction of minus ten. Um, but you know. It, to get the opportunity and have interest from a club like Southampton um, yeah I, as soon as I knew of the interest that I wanted to sign um, and I made that known to um, my agent and, and, and the club at Colchester so thankfully it happened 
Um, and, you know, it was a big move and um, I knew it was going to be a challenge because we were minus 10 points, but um, I knew the ambition of the club. Um, I spoke to Dean Wilkins, I spoke to Alan Pardew, uh, I spoke to Nicola Cortese and um, they just sold me the club. So as soon as I spoke to them, I knew I knew it was the move for me. So I was grateful that it happened in the end. Yeah, I'm very grateful you you signed for us because you you're an amazing player. You uh you captained the team which which was, you know, something quite substantial. Um so w- when you came and you spoke to Cortese, what did he relay the ambitions that you want to get back to the Premier League because obviously we were on the minus 10 points deduction the first season and everyone was hoping we'd, you know, get the playoffs but we marginally missed out. So what was the ambitions when you spoke to Cortese? The ambition was, like you say, it was for promotion. Yeah, it was, um, obviously Nicola um, was an ambitious man. The owners were ambitious. Um, Alan Pardew was obviously a manager at the highest level, and now was manager in League One. So you could you could see the the intent of the club. Um, so yeah, when I spoke to Nicola, he was just just sold me the club. He sold me the vision uh, to get back to the Premier League to try and get into Europe. Um, and we were in League One at the time. So his passion. Uh, uh, won me over um, and I had no doubt in my mind that um, the club was going to move forward whether we could do it that season um, being on minus 10 points I didn't know um, but it was something the club were really going to push for and, uh, we tried our best you know we won the Paints Trophy which was a, an amazing day um, and just missed out on the playoffs um, but we you know we had a really good season that year and it, it built the foundations for this success moving forward yeah we it was a very good season and you know take us back to that um johnson Payne's trophy you know we we've been through a lot of hurt as saints fans you know not being convinced by the team over the last couple of years and the owners gone into administration it was really you know like a good great day out for the fans to go and enjoy a bit of success at the club what did it mean for you as a player to um lead southampton out onto the football pitch that game in front of 40 40,000 plus fans Saints fans everything yeah everything um, obviously I've always wanted to play at the National Stadium I'd been to the old one um, it was the first time I'd been to the new one um, we knew what the game meant to the club um, to us as players to the supporters um, so once we reached the final um, once we were um, we we got on the the, the bus um, from the hotel to the to the stadium and we saw um, the red and white of uh, Southampton and the amount of fans that there was no doubt in my mind or the players' mind that we were gonna we were gonna win on the day we were gonna perform um, and we knew what it meant to the club and we knew that there'd been some difficult times previously um, and we believed that you know if we could win this competition at Wembley in front of 40, 50, 60,000 Southampton fans. Um, it was the moment that was going to push the club back and it was um, a real statement for us. But you know, it was a great day um, and to win 4-1 at Wembley very comfortably, um, you know, it was a really, really enjoyable day. So, yeah, great memories. Yeah, great, great memories. It was a terrific season. And then, uh, surprisingly, the following season, you know, we're not doing as well as we want to be because obviously we want to win the league, we want to get promoted. And then Adam Pardew's just missed after, you know, a 4 0 win at Bristol Rovers. Was that was that quite shocking when, when you heard the news by the club? It was a surprise. I must admit, it was a surprise. We we started the season slow, um, and that was that was strange because we had a good pre-season. Um, we had the nucleus. We had we had all the squad we had previously. Um, uh, we'd uh, we'd learned how to play together. We'd uh, we developed as a, as players individually as a group. So we understood how Alan wanted to play. And for some reason, we started the season slowly. I think we maybe had a couple of injuries. So we couldn't get our full team out, but we did against Bristol. Uh, Bristol Rovers put a really good performance in. So, yeah, the first I heard of it was was on the Monday morning, try, driving to training. Heard it on the radio um, and got into training. And, um, yeah, we were told that Alan had been relieved of his duties, as well as Wally Downs. Um, and there was going to be a change of manager. So it was a shock. Yeah, it was a shock. But, um, you know, as players, we trusted, we trusted the board. We trusted Nicola. We trusted the vision um, um, and trusted that it was potentially the right decision. So as players, you just get on with it. But in answer to your question, yeah, it was a shock because we just won 4-0 and we thought it was all right, OK, our season could potentially start from here. So, yeah, I didn't see it coming. Yeah, but I mean, it was a shock, but I suppose it was the right strategic uh, decision made by the board because we had a great man and a legend in Nigel Adkins who came in. What were your first thoughts of Nigel when he came into the dressing room and he tried to lift the players? What were your first thoughts of the manager? 
good, good. Um, he was different to Alan. Um, um, very different styles, um, different philosophies of football. Um, Nigel came in and he was bright and he was bubbly. Um, he had real enthusiasm around the club. Um, got the players together. Wanted to be close to the players. Wanted to change our style. So no, I really enjoyed working under him, and the first impressions were good. Uh, but I think it took us a few games to get going. Um, it took a, a few good weeks of working really hard in training to understand what he wanted of from us as, as a team, um, and to change into more of a passing style to play out from the back to build to play up a bit slow and a bit more controlled. Um, but no, I really enjoyed working under him. And um, but he was he was different. He was different to Alan, and you know, like you say, he's a legend of the football club. What he achieved there was was fantastic. So yeah, it was a pleasure to work under him. Uh, yeah, so it, it was an amazing season when Adkins took over. Do you have a, a favourite game from that season? I know I do. Um, uh, I don't know really. Um, put me on the spot there. I'd probably say it was got to be the last. We have to be. It have to be Plymouth um, away or the last game of the season because because obviously of promotion and what what it meant to us. Um, all that hard work that we put in all season. Yeah. Um, and we finally achieved promotion so the, the, the game away at Plymouth when we were promoted but weren't mathematically promoted was, was a great day um, good celebrations afterwards and then the final day of the season when we beat Warsaw was um, a special day to be able to be officially promoted at home in front of our own fans um, was a really really special day so yeah I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that I think there was, there's definitely a few good memories there I think um, Oldham 6-1 that was good that was good was it 6-0 quick that was a great memory and uh, yeah the, definitely Brighton that was uh, yeah you, know, you want to feel for the <laughs> clubs <laughs> that was a good one uh, but Obviously, uh, we got promoted that season, but we had a young man in Alex Oxley Chamberlain. You know, he was only seventeen years old at the time. Uh, did you see um, him having a bright future in football? Because obviously, he's gone on now to win the Champions League and things like that. Um, so, what were your first thoughts of um, young Alex? Exactly that. He was a bright talent, um, very talented player, so quick. I've always said it with um, Jane, though, he's probably quicker running with the ball than without it. Um, <laughs> naturally, a, a centre midfield player, which he's probably he's developing into now at Liverpool. Uh, but we played on the wing for us because he was that quick. Um, but yeah, when he first came over to train with the, with the first team, um, no fear. Looked a, When he first joined us, he looked like he was about 12. <laughs> um, but he, was, he had no fear. He was confident in himself. Lovely, lovely bloke. Yeah. Um, it just settled into the group really well wanted to listen wanted to learn but no he was rapid quick aggressive with the ball and he struck the ball so well so you know he only probably trained with us a couple of times and then he was moulded into the first team squad and rightly so because um, and then moved on pretty quickly because he was so young and, and so talented and, and Arsenal saw that and, and made an offer and the club obviously accepted it but yeah, yeah I could see he was going to go on and have a special career Yeah one of my well it wasn't the result we wanted but one of my favourite games game you scored in 4-4 four, four against uh, Peter Brog well I don't know if Alex meant it but he chipped the keeper uh, what a goal that was from the tightest of hands as well <laughs> But yeah, you great player. So going into that season, and you've been promoted to the championship, and you, obviously you lost Alex for you know twelve million. Was there? Did it kind of demoralise the dressing room that we've lost this lad and things like that? Because obviously he was a star player for yourself. So what we what was your ambition going into that season? Because everyone thought, oh, we'll stabilise. Because obviously Nicola had this five year plan: two years league, one three years championship. Was it going through your head promotion, or was it? What were your thoughts at the time? Well, the thoughts were the, t- the target was promotion. So within within the the group of us as players within the club, um, it was promotion. The manager made that very clear to us that um, when we came back to, from pre season for before pre season to prepare for the championship, that we were going to go for promotion. Promotion. We kept most of the virtual squad together except for Alex. Yeah. There was a few additions to the squad, um, but we were confident as players that we had momentum. We were good enough um, to compete at this level. Um, so yeah, the message was loud and clear that we were going to work and try and achieve promotion, whether we could do that or not. But that was the target. So we had that set out to us, and we were at a big club at Southampton, even though it was in the championship. We'd only just come up. Yeah. Um, Southampton's a big club in the Premier League, so you know we were going for promotion that year, and 
Yeah, and it turned out to be a fantastic season. Yeah, it was. It was definitely a fantastic season. Great one to watch as a Saints fan. Even now, it, we, it's compared to when we go through. When I'm just chatting with mates, compared to some of the great seasons we've had in the Premier League. But that season, it's just from from minute go, we were just on it. The, the, the lads were on it. You were you were playing great, doing amazing. I I, I read a stat the other day that we stayed in the top two the whole season that season, which yeah. was incredible yeah. consistency. But everyone's been coming in with the questions, and obviously you scored on the opening day against Leeds United in the opening goal of the season what a strike it was with your left foot honestly whenever anyone mentions your name I just remember that goal uh, what was going through your mind in that game and yeah so <laughs> do, you, do you know what um, I don't know really um, it was one of those games where um, because we had real competition for around the whole squad um, especially in midfield with myself Morgan Sliding yeah. um, Jack Cork uh, Richard Chaplow yeah. um, that I got, you know, I knew I had to perform. Um, yeah. I knew that I had to be my best to try and keep the shirt. I was luckily chosen to play the first game of the season to lead the t- team out. Um, so, no, I didn't think that I was going to, st- oh, you know, any time I got the ball, I was going to shoot or score. But uh, it, it just kind of, I remember getting the ball and, and taking the ball off Guli Prado in the middle of the field and just running with it. it opened up. Yeah. Why I shot on my left foot, I don't think I ever did it again. <laughs> um, so, no, it was a good strike. and. Yeah. Um, very, very happy when it went in. Um, great way to start the season for me personally and for the team. And um, no, it was a good feeling um, to score to score yeah. in front of the home fans. Um, so yeah, it was a good way to start. It was a good way to get ourselves off to the season, especially against a team like Leeds, who are a big club in that division, who are going for promotion themselves. So uh, we set our marker out early, set our intentions out early, and I think that really gave us some belief to to push on into the season. Yeah, it, it showed a big statement by the club, and I think even the fans were shocked. You know, we went, we beat Leeds three one, then we went on to beat Ipswich away five two, and there was a there was a surge of belief among amongst the fans, even though there were, there were big clubs in West Ham going for promotion and Cardiff and Southampton, obviously Leeds, but there was a definitely a great belief that we we're going to go do it, and we were just so consistent the whole season, and we, I think we just missed out on the league, which was um was it, it was a little bit of tough luck. But I think we played so well. But going through that season, um, what was it like to play in the two South Coast derbies? Because you know the rivalry between Portsmouth and Southampton, how huge it is. Um, yeah, what what was it like to play in a South Coast derby? Brilliant, loved it. Um, obviously, that was probably the only disappointment of the well. The, the two disappointments of the season were obviously the, the games against Portsmouth, where we believe we should have won both yeah. um, and not win in the league. Uh, but no. Brilliant games to play, and you could feel the you could feel the tension. You could feel the build up during the week. You could feel the the extra importance of the game, um, and real, real hot, uh, hot atmospheres between the fans. So, yeah, it was a disappointment not to win either of the games, especially leading um, both games and, and drawing both games, and um, more so the the home game where um, I think we scored. Um, in the 80, late eighties uh, of the game, and then they equalised with a with a great strike. To yeah. be fair to them, but yeah, that was probably one of the disappointments of the season. That if you know we didn't beat Portland that year, but great games and, and loved them. Um, I remember the players loved playing. Yeah, uh, but a great big disappointment game. not beating them. Yeah, uh, it was a it was a strike by David Norris, which was virtually the last strike yeah. of the game. Yeah, I know, yeah. uh, disappointing. But don't worry, you were in recent times we've gone up down one four nil, so it's all it's all forgotten about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean it was it was a great season, but then coming towards the end of the season, we obviously had the opportunity at Middlesbrough to seal promotion. Would you think there was a bit of nerve going into the last couple of games of the season, and that's probably what you know got into the players' minds, or was it just? on the day sort of thing I don't think there was nerve no I, th- I think we were we were aware and conscious that obviously we were so close to achieving something that at the start of the season we were probably the only ones that we could get promoted um, and there was a couple of games left and yeah we went to Middlesbrough and we knew if we'd won we would have been promoted because I think West Ham drew and we played later in the day and um, we scored early on I remember Billy Sharp scoring after a few minutes and we started the game really well yeah. um, but unfortunately we didn't get a result but I wouldn't say there was nerves around I wouldn't say there was but you know we knew going into the last game of the season um, playing against Coventry at home that if we'd been offered that at the start of the season we'd have, we would have bitten someone's hand off so yeah. we were confident that we would still get promoted yeah. even though they needed to win to stay up so 
um, to be again like the previous season to be playing your last game of the season at home to get promoted yeah. um, fantastic so yeah no nerves really but just just we probably sense the importance of, of all the games towards the end and you know Redding have put such a good run together yeah. uh, winning 16-17 games in a row they just, they just made it difficult for us yeah, I think uh, Brian McDermott revolutionised that team, took over, and then they went from like battling relegation to winning the league, which was, you know, hats off to them for that incredible achievement. But obviously, it was nice to, I suppose, it was a blessing in, in disguise losing to Middlesbrough because it was it was a great day to beat Coventry and seal promotion, and I, and I suppose we would never have had that had we beat Middlesbrough because their league was pretty much. Uh, done and dusted um, once Reading knew that they'd uh, won we lost at Middlesbrough but it gave us that special special day against Coventry the sun was out you know the, the stadium was full you know I think it was a blessing in disguise in the end yeah in hindsight it's a blessing in disguise but I think at the time we'd have liked to have been Middlesbrough just to make sure we got promoted but yeah like you say um, two seasons in a row we'd had two home games at the last last two games of the season to get promoted so no it was an amazing day it's like you say the sun was out and um, we started the game well we were 2-0 up uh, went on to win 4-0 party atmosphere um, I can remember it clearly and just being able to celebrate with the fans and um, just you know, the years before the, 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 the club you know having the hurt of the administration potentially the, the ownership relegations um, it was just a great day to get the club back to where they, they belonged, a Premier League club, a massive club, and we could all celebrate together uh, at the home stadium. So, yeah, great day. Yeah, great day. And if we just talk about a few players that were significant in the promotion, obviously everyone did their bit, but I think Adam Lalana, Ricky Lambert, they stick out for, you know, Lalana getting the assists, Lambert putting him away in the net. What what a great combination those those two were. Did you think Lalana would go on to, to win the Champions League, play for, you know, a big team in the Premier League? Because he was just, you know, a lot of people just written him off and a lot of people thought the whole squad weren't going to do that well, like Lambert and Lalana in the Premier League and the, they, they, they proved him wrong. Yeah, I mean, that season, like you say, there was a lot of players that contributed. There were a lot of players that did their job, but... Um, them two in particular um, were, were fantastic and they had a, a real connection between each other like you say Adam um, with his assist and, and Ricky with all his goals were both brilliant um, and you know they were had a huge impact on us and um, give us real belief as a team because when you've got them two at the top of the pitch knowing they can create or score goals it makes a real difference um, but yeah I mean Adam Adam I would still say to this day is is one of the best or not the or if not the best player I played with in my career so talented um, worked so hard in training um, had natural ability but was really hungry to improve every day yeah. um, and loved his football so yeah I did I did see that he would go on to have a, a fantastic career um, and he proved that in the Premier League and, and the same with Ricky that you know Ricky went on to play for England same as Adam so you know they probably Ricky and Adam probably proved people wrong um, in their career all the way through so they deserved everything they got just because they're, they're good players and good people as well so lovely to see how well they've done yeah and you have uh, Morgan Schneidlin who went on to enjoy quite a bit of success with Southampton and obviously play for France and then Fonte the surprise package goes on to be a European Championship winner with Portugal so um, that, that squad had tons of potential in it and it, it must have been amazing to play with those sort of great players but also to what was Kelvin Davis like? You know, he he had the opportunity to to play for West Ham when the club went in administration. He turns the car around and says, "No, I, I want to stay in Southampton. That's where my family is." How significant was he in the dressing room? Because obviously, you were team captain and he was club captain. What was it like to have him around? Brilliant, brilliant. Um, so much respect for Kelvin. Um, first of all, what a player. Um, yeah what a goalkeeper um, and like you say a really brave decision to stay on it um, at Southampton um, but I believe he could probably see the potential um, but no he was a huge huge influence on the dressing room um, to the players um, set an example in training set an example as, as a man um, and if he needed anything if he needed some advice if he needed a chat with him you know the players could go to him so he, he was massive and um he had he had the respect of all the players in that dressing room, so he he had such an impact from um, 
from from when I joined to to when I left. So um, no, a, a lot to thank Calvin for, and he was great. He was a club captain. He led, like I say, he led by example, and he was really good to me when um, I was given the armband. Um, supported me, so yeah. Um, another player that ha- had a real, real impact on why the club was so successful. Yeah, no, it was a there was a transition off the Elm Band round of November two thousand nine where Pardew thought we need a bit more vocalism on the field. So you would have had to be more vocal, you know, speak to the defenders, attackers, and Joe everyone together. W- was it a difficult job at the time? No, what to be captain or or, or, or to, to be captain? No, I mean it was a pleasure giving the armband. I'd done it previously at Colchester. I'd done it previously at Brighton, so it was something reasonably natural to. To me, I would say I'm more of a leader on the pitch than necessarily off it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Alan Pardew just wanted someone on the field closer to the player, could get messages to strikers and fielders, defenders, have a more of an influence on the referee and, and the game. So that was more the reasoning behind it. It was nothing to do with Calvin or, or a reflection on him. It was just more that um, Alan wanted a player within uh, the radius of the pitch. So no, it was a pleasure to, to captain the side, loved it. Um, and you know really really good memories of, of captain the club and um, special times to lead that team out yeah well we got promoted and then um, obviously in the summer you were you were unfortunately loaned up to Brighton a club where you started your career at I think when when I spoke to everyone this week about speaking to you they said that one of the biggest regrets they have as Saints fan is never seeing you kick a ball in the Premier League with Southampton obviously you had to it was probably gutting to see at the time obviously he did play in the Premier League with Leicester eventually but how hard of a decision was that for yourself and everything because I know you're you're good friends with Nigel it was yeah it was difficult I must admit it, it was difficult because I'd signed for the club in League One and now we're in the Premier League and like everyone else within the squad I wanted an opportunity I wanted an opportunity to prove myself um, but that didn't it just didn't happen and and that's football, it's opinions, um, people have different views on things, so no, but the club were great with me, I must admit, uh, Nicola was good with me, Nigel were good with me, they were honest with me, um, more midfielders had come into the club, I knew potentially it was going to be more difficult for me to play, um, uh, War Prowse was coming through, so they saw a big future in him, um, and, and that's life, you know, you make decisions at the time, um, I got an opportunity um, to go back to Brighton um, on loan, um, so yeah I had a decision to make and I sat down with Nigel we had a good discussion and, and we, I made a decision and, and the club helped me uh, make the move so if you're asking me did I have any regrets yes I would love to have led the team out um, once in the Premier League played in the Premier League for Southampton I would have loved that but it wasn't meant to be um, no. um, but you know that happens in football and that's, that's you have ups and downs but I wouldn't change anything about myself and career because I loved it and I was very privileged to play for the club. Yeah, you were always one of those players who um, gave 100% for the uh, for the name on the front, Southampton, the badge. We all saw that as fans. So it was obviously uh, disappointing to, when we did see you leave, but you always gave 100% to the club and you were well acknowledged among the Saints fans and everyone was excited about the interview. So we've got a few questions from the fans that have come in, if, if that's okay, just to answer for a couple of minutes. Of course it is, yeah. 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 So... Um, um, I have one from uh, Hugh who who said um, Hugh Barlett who says who was your favourite player you played with at Southampton or the most talented player um, I probably already answered that but I'd have to say I mean first of all there were some amazing players very talented players and in, in the in the right in all different ways um, but if you the most talented player and the most gifted player I'd have to say would that be Adam Lallana oh, right. um, just technically fantastic um, and worked so hard um, and a great guy as well so I'd have to say him. and was there a um, was there a best mate in the in the dressing room someone who you still keep in touch with now I still speak to a few of the players um, I wouldn't say I had a best mate to be honest I was uh, um, but I would say I keep in contact with players I was just kind of a um, a person that kind of got on with everyone but didn't get too close to anyone um, so you know, I wouldn't say I had a best mate there, but um, I still speak to some of the players and we still speak about memories of um, being at the club. Um, so I wouldn't say I had a best mate, but, you know, got on with everyone. And was there was there a favourite game um, in, in the red and white? So what was your favourite game at, at Southampton, I suppose? Oh, that's a good question, that. Um, 
I must admit, I enjoyed the Leeds game um, because obviously scoring that goal. Um, but favourite game, I'd have to say, um, would just be that, that. Even though I came off injured after about 25 minutes, would be the last game of the season yeah. um, to get promoted to the Premier League. Um, that was just just such an achievement of back to back promotion. So I wouldn't say it was my uh, most memorable game, but the, what it actually meant, I'd have to say that game. Yeah, as well. Those are just a few questions that, that kept coming up, so we just asked that. But and to just to finish off, uh, Dean, um, we'd love to have you back at Southampton. Do you ever see a future in coaching or coming back to the football club? And you know, because obviously you've got Kelvin there in a coaching role, could you see yourself coming back to the club in a coaching role in the future? Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to come back to the club in, in, in some respects. Um, that would always be an ambition of mine. Um, whether it's coaching, whether it's maybe part of the media, maybe it's. Um, I mean, I was loan manager at Leicester, Leicester City for a while. So, you know, in some capacity, I would love to come back to the club because it, it holds great memories and um, got real affection for the club. So, yeah, I would love to work for the club again and, and be part of it. So, yeah, hopefully in the future one day. Um, so let's see. Yeah, well, it was. Uh, I know you had the loan manager at Leicester and coaching like that. So, are you uh, currently doing your coaching badges, or? Was... Uh, I've, I've 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 done my level two. I've done some of my B license, so I need to finish that off. So bits and bobs, really. Um, it's been uh, the last since retirement has been a bit up and down for me. A bit here and there, trying different things. Um, I've got three children, moving around, so probably just set on my roots now so um, I'm just figuring out what I really want to do for the rest of my life and um, I love my fitness so I've got my, my fitness business um, but yeah I would love to come get back involved in football because I think I've got something to offer um, and I'd love that to be at Southampton. Yeah no it would be amazing um, you're always welcome at the club and uh, we, we hope once everything gets back to normal we can uh, see you at St Mary's again and perhaps come come out on half time like the old legends do and uh, just give, us, <laughs> give us a couple of your thoughts uh, do you come to Saints uh, much? I have been yeah I've been back a few times to watch a few games which is always nice um, to see to see games and um, be at the stadium because it just holds such great memories so I've been back a few times um, not as much as I'd like because I was living in Leicester for a few years so um, but now I'm back down south again um, I'll try to get a few to a few more games but yeah I love coming back yeah it was always great to see you. thanks a lot Dean for your time um, it's uh, you know amazing that you've done this uh, we were just trying to get a couple of players we, we tried a few of them but we really wanted you to get you you yourself I know Yoss has done a few podcasts on Richard but it's, it's good to it's good to hear from you we're all grateful I know where this goes on air it's gonna it's gonna be quite popular it's really really good hearing from you and on behalf from all the Southampton fans thank you for everything you've done for the club yeah, an amazing player and uh, an amazing person. Thanks, um, thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's really good. No problem. No problem at all. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, mate. Stay safe. Thank you, mate. Bye. Bye.